All right, guys, we got a challenge today. Either I'm gonna make a hand drill friction fire or I'm gonna eat this fish raw. I don't like eating raw fish. All right, guys, starting now, give me 12 minutes. That's right, 12 minutes of your time and I'm gonna teach you how to do the hand drill. If I can't do it, if I'm not successful in teaching you how to do the hand drill in 12 minutes, you can feel free to unsubscribe. That's my guarantee. Not only am I giving myself a challenge today, but I'm giving you a challenge too. I want you guys out in the audience to show me that you can do friction fire. I wanna see a hand drill friction fire. You can either choose to do it on video or not. It's completely up to you. But if you do it on video, I will pin your video in the comments. And so you'll get the notoriety that you want for doing something that's amazing. Now, maybe you've never done hand drill friction fire before. And that's all the better. I'm gonna give you all the ingredients you need to have in order to be able to do it. I took me about a month to do it the first time, but after I mastered it, it was easy. All I needed to do was understand a few simple things in order to get it done. Now, I had to go through all the trouble myself, but you won't have to. I'm gonna show you how. Okay guys, first step is you need to find your hearth board. Hearth board can be any software, as near as I can tell. Uh, I've had no, no good luck with cedar. I tried a lot with cedar before I finally gave up. I find using an aspen or poplar would work. Something like what's behind me uh, right here, but you don't want to obviously chop down a whole tree. You want to find something that's already downed or maybe even cut a branch off. That's what I would recommend. Cut something off the right size, shape it, and then let it dry. I'm going to show you what I used or an option I would use around here and uh, give you some ideas, but you're gonna have to find what works in your environment and that might be a different option. But I would definitely look at the poplars, aspen, uh, pine, cedar. Those are maybe some things you might wanna look into. So here's an option that I think would be good. It's, uh, I've already caught it. I've seen the inside is fairly dry. The outside's got some ice on it. So as is, it probably won't work. I'll need some drying. But people in my neighborhood, my neck of the woods, historically did not make friction fire by hand they use the bow drill so here here is the top section of it it's been cut so what this needs to do is shaped into a board and then thinned out into the right shape that we can work with it has to be the right dimensions or it won't work Whew. here we go here's a nice block now we need to shape this into something that's going to work for us now that we've got our block what we need to do is find our spindle now the spindle is something that we can't necessarily always find in the woods, at least not in my experience. So we're gonna head back to the city and we're gonna go to the most likely spot where you're gonna find the plant called mullen. Mullen is a plant that prefers disturbed soil. So that soil anywhere where there's been some man-made disturbances like infill lots, future building sites, uh, by railroad tracks, now it's a weed species and once you identify mullen, you can literally find mullen everywhere. There are other methods you can use for your hand drill, but the easiest one is the weed species mullen. So let's go find some. All right guys, you're gonna have to not mind the city noise, but this is exactly where you're gonna get cars driving by. I'm on the railroad tracks here. I'm right in the middle of the city, but this is exactly where you're gonna find what you need to make your hand drill fire. So behind me, I have mullen. Mullen will grow in disturbed soils almost everywhere that I know. I drive around and I find it everywhere. You can find it out in the country. The last piece I found was actually out in the park. Great big tall mullen, over six feet tall. That's the one I'll be using today, but I want to find this for demonstration purposes. Like I say, this is a weed species, a very tall weed species. It's got, on the top it's got a big seed head. This is uh, springtime right now. Good time to pick them. Also good time is in the fall after they've gone through their cycle, but uh, you can harvest them in the green form, take them home and dry them. We're gonna grab this right now. We're not gonna break it off. We're gonna cut it off at the bottom and that way we won't have any tears and rips and shreds all the way through. I recommend that you do not use this straight out of the woods. All you wanna do right now is collect your materials. So. We've got all our materials now. We've got our block down here, which is going to turn into a hearth board, and we've got our mullen. So your mullen, you're gonna let dry, and then you are going to work away at it until it is 100% smooth. You do not want to do the hand drill friction fire with a very rough piece of mullen because your hands are gonna get completely mangled. 
When you're done, you are going to end up with something like that. And I didn't use sandpaper, but I'm recommending that you do. Uh, although you don't have to. If you do a nice, good, clean job like I've done on this one, you won't need the sandpaper. But take the sandpaper, do yourself a favor, go up and down on it, smooth that out, get all the slivers and burrs and stuff that you're not ending up in your hand. You want nice and smooth, so that's going to go nice on your delicate city hands and fingers like mine. The next thing is your hearth board. Now you're going to start off with something like this, and you're going to end up something with like this. Now you can see how thin that is. The thinness is important. I know I talk about thicker is better, but in this situation, thicker is not better. Thicker is going to cause you problems. You can see this is the one that works, this one is too thick, and this one is too thick. So you have to know exactly how thick it, it needs to be and you have to actually implement that. Take your spindle, that's the thickness you want. You do not want it to be thicker than your spindle, got it? not thicker than your spindle, about the same width as your spindle. Now, for this particular challenge, I'm not going to ask you guys to blow it into flame, but you get bonus points in the world of friction fire for actually blowing into flame. So what are you going to use? Well, as always, we have our bag of tinder. For me, what works really well is birch bark. So I've got some dried birch bark in here, and if we dig down inside here, we have some cedar bark. Okay, got it? Cedar bark, birch bark. This is your, gonna be your first hand drill friction fire. Am I correct? Yeah? Otherwise you wouldn't be watching this, would you? Maybe you wanna live vicariously through me and just watch me do it. Get out there and do it. Okay, so now for some cheats. Take your hearth board here that you've made, put it on a baseboard heater, leave it there for a week. If you don't have a baseboard heater, put it in the oven on a very low temperature. Make sure if you're doing this, you let your parents know if you're a kid. Okay? Otherwise, keep, keep a good eye on it. Leave the door open. Just You're going to bake it. You're going to get rid of 100, almost 100% of the moisture as much as you possibly can. You're going to do the same thing with your spindle. You can either let that air dry inside your house, put it on a baseboard. Uh, you're not going to fit in your oven. You can also leave it in, the, in your car, in the sun, like in the back seat or something. Just let it bake all that moisture out. Now, we're not in a survival situation. All we're doing here, guys, is learning. So let's learn how to do it first. Like, we don't have to put ourselves through 100% of a real life scenario. Let's learn how to do it. Make it easy on yourself. All right, guys, we're almost there. We've got our groove made in. All I've done is hollowed that out with a knife, and then I've made sure that I've got a nice spot for my spindle. That's it. There's only a couple things you can modify, speed and pressure. You guys know this. Speed and pressure. Now, we've got tricks. We've got tricks, guys. So what I've got here is some honey. Remember, guys, we're city slickers doing this challenge. We can use whatever we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some honey on this. Get all over our hands, too. Now, if you're not a city slicker, what you're going to use is pine. Pine sap. If you find that you're not producing any smoke in about 30 to 40 seconds, you're doing it wrong, stop. You have one chance to get this right. Why am I saying one chance? Because your hands are too soft from being typey typey on the computer. Okay, just like mine. I don't do hand drill all the time, my hands get soft and uh, they're prone to blisters. I get blisters right there on my palm, both sides. I have one chance to do this. The second chance, there'll be hot spots, and then the, by the third chance, they'll be tore open. So I've got one chance. Okay, so hands up high, come all the way down, and restart. The spindle has to stay put. You don't want it popping out, you'll lose your heat. Okay, something's wrong, no smoke. The end is getting polished, we need to take that polish off. Okay, now we've got to stop. So we've got smoke now, that's good. Now we've got to cut our notch. You can see last time I made my notch here, I actually didn't go deep enough. So my ember flew out on the outside here and created a burn mark on the outside. So I actually had my fire not collect in the groove, but it actually collected 
on top of the board. So what we want to do is make our groove so that it at least comes into the center here so that when we make our dust it falls into the groove rather than up on top. Okay guys remember we only got one chance. Our hands are city slicker hands. We got one chance and then we got to wait a week before we try again. So let's make it a good one. Okay so we've got our posture. We are going to drive as much pressure as we can down into the spindle. That means using our body forward. Drive all the, all everything we got left. Remember these are tough conditions. All our muscles will give. We're gonna give it a couple pops. We're gonna leave it, give it some oxygen. It's liking the oxygen, so we're gonna keep doing that. Okay. Let's let it sit for a second. So we got a weak ember there. All right guys, so this guy's really weak. We gotta make sure our tender butter works real well. I'm not super confident right now, but we might actually just lose it moving it. It's so small. Man, I love bow drill for that reason. You get a nice big ember. You see that little, little squirt. Oh boy. Wouldn't want to be risking eating raw fish with this ember. Oh, come on, be free, would you? Okay. Yeah, we got the smallest ember in the world in here. All right. A little bit of luck, a little bit of luck. Smoke is good. With some luck, so with some luck, we might not be eating raw fish. We did it. Okay, got some extra flame here. Ha, we did it. All right, let's go throw this in a fire. Ha ha ha, I'm not eating raw fish. All right guys, so remember how I talk about city slicker skin and how you're only gonna get one chance to make a fire? Well, this is what I'm talking about. See that flap of skin right there? Oh God, that's uh, not nice. So there you go, a flap of skin on that hand and uh, not as bad. That's actually what we want to form. That's a callus forming. See, I've got like, you know, weightlifting calluses up here. 
up there there's a nice but you don't I don't have the friction fire hand drill friction fire calluses that is why you got one chance and if you want to be proficient at it you got to work up to it yeah man you got to do this every week so that's why not too many people do the hand drill friction fire right there I get hot spots and calluses from city slicker hands fun huh so I discovered a really great way to debone these little trout and uh, I've always struggled with these rib bones. You can see how they're starting to separate, which is nice. But if they're not separating, all you do is run down the backbone here. You can hear them. The knife ticking up against them. And then right there it stops because those bones are up there. Well, these bones can easily be removed now with your hand and you can actually feel them by running your hand down there. So the reason you would do this is when you cook on the fire, you don't want to have to worry about little bones. And they're starting to separate. So we got those out and we can work our way down from there. Just ticking along those bones, any of them that pop up and then we can work our way back. You can hear them popping now. So, here we go. We can remove all these little bones here. All right, I fully realize that there are very few of you that are gonna actually go out and try this challenge. But I think if you do, you're gonna be very happy and proud of yourself. And I'm gonna be proud of you too. And I know as men, we don't hear that enough that somebody else is proud of us. But you know what? I've talked to other YouTubers and they're having struggles too, getting their channels going. And when they're successful, I tell them I'm proud of them because as men, we just don't hear that anymore. And there are so many men who go through their whole lives and I never hear that message. I'm proud of you. So for anybody out there who's pushing their limits and going back outside and trying your best and, and doing little challenges and maybe not big ones, and maybe they're big challenges for you. I'm proud of you guys. I'm, I, I really am. I'm proud that I'm hearing stories of how you guys are getting back outside and taking part in the outdoors again and discovering what it is to be a man and if you're not a man yet working toward it so guys i'm proud of you please let me know your successes and failures down below and i'm more than happy to give you some pointers anything that i might have missed in this video thanks for joining me guys and uh, as always subscribe or not i don't care